I now invite Lauren to give us our message for this Sunday. Everybody, please welcome Lauren to the podium. Thank you, Sari. Thank you, everybody. Good morning, Temple family. Good morning to everyone in the sanctuary again, and to everyone listening on the World Wide Web. It's always great to be here to share with you, and I hope everyone will stay connected throughout the week with any of the activities that we have planned. I mean, you heard a lot from Zaria a while ago. Ah, uh, why am I here? <laughs> Well, it's that time of year again where the teens are and the young adults are prepping for exams. And as we support them, I'm here to kind of fly, carry the torch for them while they prep for their exams. And we'll have them in our prayers as well mm -hmm. as that happens. So I'll do my best to represent for them. But I mean, as we talk about the young adults and teens, I mean, what this generation has to navigate I mean, it's so much different from how it was years ago, even for me. I put myself in the youth category. <laughs> All the distractions that they have um, didn't exist before, even as short as 10 years ago. And a lot of the cries you hear from the youth, I'll focus on one, is a lot of them feeling, you know, a little bit down and underappreciated. Studies show that in a new world with social media driving most things, it's having a negative effect on people, not just the teens, but everybody on a whole. We see it everywhere where people are trying to be like what they're seeing on social media, walking, talking, Jamaicans with these accents, I don't know where they get them from, um, people acting, you know, expressing themselves with hair, I don't know, all these things. It may be strange to me. That's where I'm on the board of between <laughs> old and young, you know? And, you know, they're idolizing these people and following these people that they have never met, you know? And uh, some of them starving themselves to be like these icons who are slim, but, you know, clearly I'm not in that <laughs> category, which is why I have the jacket on today, <laughs> right? So, seriously though, persons get lost in this life of the stars, the rich and the famous, fictional, fictional characters, you know, avatars, and they lose track of what reality is, not just overseas, but here in Jamaica, and I'm sure we have all seen it, especially if we interact with kids, we see it on the news and in the media all over. Right? Everybody agree? Yeah. Okay. I need, I'm going to need a little feedback, you know? If I could plant a seed today, it would be for these persons to see that they are perfect the way they are. Um, and a good way to start believing that is by starting to say positive things towards yourself. Um, one of my missions this morning is to remind us that one of our most important relationships is a relationship that we have with ourselves. So I'm gonna give everybody a short exercise and I'd like you to compliment the person next to you. No more than two compliments, please. Wait, wait before you start, before you start, <laughs> let me just give you a story. No backhanded compliments. All right, I know we have some creative people in here. So <laughs> I'll give you a little <laughs> scenario. Um, I want to take Liam to the barber for his back to school trim, right? But you know, Liam is not that a fun, fond of going to the barber. So I said, okay, I'll get a haircut uh, along with him. So Liam went through, got his haircut, okay, and then it was my turn, so the barber asked me, you know, what do you, what, what, what do you, what do you want to do? What style do you want? Um, I said, I'm not a style person, just, you know, trim everything down to the, to the same level, right? So I said, oh, that's good, man, you know, you know yourself, you know your face. So he started and I was thinking, that's an interesting answer. I took it as a compliment. And I said, you know, you know, what did you mean by, I know my face, I mean, it's just a, him said, boy, boss, you know, have no hairline for any style, you know. So, <laughs> you pick the right thing. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> go, go to the exercise. <laughs> Let, okay, give the person beside you two compliments at least. 
<laughs> yeah, right, so let me let me hear let me hear them and write down some of them. <laughs> okay. Can I hear some of them? I'm not hearing them from up here. You play piano so well. Oh, sir? <laughs> Love sucks, okay. <laughs> All right, it seems like everybody going to the whole church, so let me bring everybody back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, everybody. Oh, I you. I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wheel it in, wheel it in, wheel it in. We're back, we're back, we're back. All right, some of the quick things I wrote down were beautiful, gorgeous, love socks, fashion. Nobody reassured me that my hairline was good, but that's okay. So, I mean, all of these things are good, right? Um, but the, the, the compliments are, you know, somewhat external, which kind of leads it back to the social media idea where we don't necessarily see what people have in them. Our beauty, really and truly, is skin deep, is inside. And that's the part we need to take notice of. So, you know, compliments that could be different, and I guess it comes with knowing people as well, will be stuff like, you know, I'll start with some of the kids. How well you spell, how good you are with math, how good your handwriting is, how intelligent you are, how caring you are, how, how well you bake, how, be, how well you, you cook. If anybody wants to invite us for Sunday dinner, that's fine. <laughs> and you know, how patient you are. And I say these things to say, you know, when last have some of us even said these things to ourselves? You know what I mean? Self-reassuring is important. And a lot of times we're not in environments where we get reassured, it could be at work, it could be at home just if you live by yourself. So it's important to plant seeds for ourselves to remind us how great we are. Um, sometimes when people start focusing on what they call sort of their flaws and weaknesses, because people seem tend to be hard on themselves, looking and finding what they perceive as flaws and weaknesses in themselves, and they overlook the other good aspects that they have which is probably 90% of their personality, of, the, of themselves. And the thing is, once we plant these seeds and we reinforce ourselves, we feel better about ourselves. And when we feel better about ourselves, we do better. Right? And another thing is that you can't give away what you don't have. That's both physical, spiritual, and emotional. So it's important for us to you know, develop these skills and make ourselves stronger so we can spread our light as we you know, traverse this world. So you know, we have classes that help with building these things and frequent visits to, to the temple. All right. So we have to build ourselves, we have to, build ourselves up. It's good to hear from others, but we have to feel ourselves. We have to be our biggest fan, right? The negative thoughts that we have, as little as they may be, they, they can take up the most space. So we have to learn from losses that we have, celebrate our victories, celebrate our talents, and continue to build ourselves. We're, we're always quick to big up other people and forget to big up the internal person in us. So let's, this week, assignment one, be a little kinder to ourselves this week, right? So let's say big me up. Everybody can say, let's big me up. Big me up. All right. That doesn't sound like a good big up, but all right, we'll work on it. So I'll share about myself as well, I mean, when I'm asked to speak, the default thing for me is that I think of all the great speakers that we have here at the temple, 
that I perceive to be better than myself. Um, I think about Sandy, who draws from her life experiences, especially like when she speaks about her dancing and turns them into gems. Reverend Anne, who focuses more on Bible-related stories, uses that to make her gems. Vance, sports, music, that's his thing. He brings that into his talk. Um, Reverend Michael, from the science point of view, I know sometimes that's over a lot of people's head, but I appreciate it. <laughs> and of course, Reverend John, who is everything. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> so I guess God walking maybe, I'm not sure. <laughs> right? So um, that already has put me at a disadvantage if I keep those thoughts in my head because I can't compare them, compare to them because I'm not them. They have their different talents, their experiences. I'm, I'm just me. And Frankly, I'm, I'm really very reserved. I don't really like being on the platform and <laughs> feel to run off every time <laughs> I'm up here, but I'm here, right? And it's a part of growth. <laughs> Thank you. But that um, led me to Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect which to me translates to I'm created in the likeness of God, which means I have what I need to get what I need to get done. So I'm okay where I am, how I am, where I am, and how I'm traveling on my journey. Um, even in the, this delivery so far, I've made mistakes. You may not know because you're not seeing the paper, but <laughs> But, um, you know, I don't relieve them. I just move on and try to improve as I go through the talk and just hope that the next parts get better and better. So, you know, as we go in our day-to-days, I ask you not to relive mistakes. In fact, I don't think they call them mistakes anymore. I think a new term is called lessons learned, right? So let's do away with mistakes. So our lessons learned and just focus on what is right. Learn, move on, focus, and get what's right with you. God has given us what we need to fulfill our destiny. No comparisons are needed, so we need to stop comparing and run our race. Our life is not meant to be an imitation. Even though imitations can help us along the way and help us rise, it should not be the blueprint of our life. And I believe that not following your dream or doing what you want to do, you will not reach to your limit. You won't reach your abundance because our journey leads us to our abundance. It can't be somebody else's journey that leads us to our ab abundance. Um, one of the quick example I'll give you, everybody would know Usain Bolt wanted to be a cricketer, right? Yeah, he did. I prefer him being the fastest man in the world, personally. But that's an example of, you know, following, following your journey. Family, it's about being the best version of you, the best expression of you. You know, just, just be you. While you're being you, and insecure at times, there's someone out there wanting to be you. You know, what you consider to be not the best about you, someone is looking at that and thinking, yeah, I can, I want to do that, I can do that. So we need to start viewing our weaknesses as actually strengths and just looking at things differently. I remember from one of my classes, the, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, it's race consciousness, I think. When you put a label on something that doesn't exist, then it will become that. So we need to get away from that and put our positive mass on these things. Um, I'm gonna leave that topic now. I think I've 
been through it enough. Did everybody get what that, what that segment was all about? <laughs> what was it? Do your best, you. Ve very good, Reverend John. <laughs> very good. Give the others a chance. <laughs> all right. All right, story time. This is a story that some of you might know. There was a very wealthy man that had a contractor that worked with him. This contractor worked with him several times and his attitude towards work was very good and his workmanship was also very good. So I'm gonna give you all a part here. Let's name the contractor. What should we call a contractor? This Bob. is from a story. Bob. Joe. What? Joe. Jill? Joe? Joe? Okay. And what should I name the, the wealthy man? Bossy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now the story is going to get interesting. <laughs> so Joe had been, do, do you remember who is who? <laughs> you just throw names and they remember, I bet. <laughs> Joe is a contractor. Bossy is a wealthy man. All right, I have to remind myself too. So Joe had been down on his luck and hadn't had much business in recent times. Bossy felt a bit sorry for Joe and decided to help him out. Bossy invited out Joe and gave him some plans to build a house with a check for, for simple math, $500,000. He said, I wanted to use these funds to build me a new house. You handle the details. Anything you want, call me when you're done. Joe assured him, sorry, boss, he assured him he'd pay him very well, and he just wanted him to do the best job he could. Joe was very excited because he finally got some work. He hadn't had work in a long time and you know this was his way out of his drought then you know something set in being out of work for so long he said you know what let me let me let me try and cut a few corners right so he could get some of the money for himself he wouldn't have all that money invested in the house so he went around and he found, for example, the cheapest concrete he could find. He had uh, the workers water down the concrete so it could stretch. He saved several thousand dollars on the foundation. He, brought, he bought the cheapest lumber. Some of the wood was old, crooked, warped. But you know, he didn't care those things would be inside the foundation. He wouldn't, he wouldn't see that. Right? He got the cheapest plumber, the cheapest electrician, and continued to cut corners right and less, right and left. And um, you know, pocketed the money. When he had finished, he had saved about a hundred thousand dollars. He was very happy. He called Bossy and you know to, to look at the place because he had finished, and Bossy was very impressed. The house was very beautiful on the outside. And it was impossible to tell by, the, by anybody that corners were cut in the development of the house, right? So Joe couldn't wait to see how much money Boss was going to give him for completing the house. He knew that Boss was a generous man and the rewards would be good. But you know what happened? Yeah. Bossy, did, Bossy said, you know what? I don't really need another house. I have a beautiful one. I just wanted to help you out. He handed him the keys and said, here, you just built your own house. Right? So, thank you. All the lessons learned in that story, but thanks for the applause. So, you know, Joe nearly passed out when him get the keys, right? 
Because if he knew it was going to be his, the work would have been done differently. And I think that's a lesson that we can all learn from here. Um, professionally, in school, and of course, spiritually. Right? So we may not realize it, but our action, with our actions, we are building our own house. We can cut corners here and there, but um, the only person we're accept, we're, what's the word? Give me another word. Hurting, short, good, good, good. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is, is ourself, right? So, you know, back to what I was saying earlier, in that what we're taking is like food, right? We're taking the garbage, we're taking the social media, we're feeding ourselves those, those things. We need to try and take in more growth material, whichever form it is. If we water down our foundation by not being trustworthy in our commitments, slacking off, cheating on tests, what kind of material are we putting in our house? What are we building for ourselves? I'm asking for us to learn from Joe and be a person of integrity. Do the right thing when nobody's watching. Don't let the small things keep us from being the best version of ourselves. And let's start passing these personal tests, because these tests are for nobody except us. This, uh oh, lost my spot. Okay. So if we do this on our journey, it will be more fulfill, fu fruitful because you choose to walk, <clears throat> walk in integrity. And you're not going to see promotion, any change, any breakthroughs. The, the leveling up will take longer. And our path to our journey will, will take longer. So in, in closing that segment, I would say, you know, let, let's feed ourselves property, properly and live with, live with integrity. Right? So, so, so that's it for that segment. All right. Th this, is, this is the last thing now. I'm, I'm, I'm closing. This part was not planned at all, so it can either go two ways. <laughs> right? But we'll think in the positive. So, um, in the reading I was doing, one of the things I came across which I found interesting was that they say songs that you listen to allowed can actually manifest, right? And I guess it's the same thing with, with words as well, with their affirmations. Mm -hmm. So in this part, in this portion, is there any song anybody listens to and sings aloud that helps to motivate them or keep them going? What's that, Eva? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Oh, nice. We did that one for you today. <laughs> right? So I'm going to go to a more modern song because, you know, Youth Sunday. <laughs> so this song, some of us, you know, listening to it may not really understand what the, what the lyrics are. I'm not into the whole song in the, because, you know, we're closing off now. But it's really just a portion of the chorus. I'm going to read it first, and I'm going to ask Zari to help me sing it. What, what expression does she have on her face? I'm not even looking at her. She's okay. She's okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so now Zari knows. And uh, the thing is, it reads, I put my armor on to show you. Oh, the song, by the way, is Unstoppable by Sia. I, I, I'm sure all of you have probably heard it, right? Yeah, so Zari's gonna let us hear it in a little bit. 
But what it's saying is I put my armor on to show you how strong I am. Kids coming through the Sunday school, maybe the younger ones wouldn't know, but we speak about the armor of love and how it protects us. So from a religious science point of view, that has a different meaning to someone hearing and reading that. You put on, I'll put on my armor and show you what I am. I'm unstoppable. I'm a Porsche with no brakes. That's a very fast car that cannot be stopped. Emphasizing unstoppable. I'm invincible. I win every single game. I'm so powerful. I don't need batteries to play. Right? I'm so confident. I'm unstoppable today. That's the excerpt from the, 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 the chorus. So I'm, I just want to ask Zari to sing it. It's not my forte. I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. I'll put Zara, so I'll try. And uh, Cantor, if you can help me. And anybody else who knows it, please um, feel free to join in. Once you hear the melody, you'll probably know it. And if you don't know it, just even hum to the melody. Right? So let's, let's give this a try. So this is my experiment. Let's, let's make it a plus, and not a, and not a right. <laughs> um, it's okay. Mm. Sorry, can you start Ready? Okay. Yeah. So I put my arm um, on Show so you how, how strong, strong I am I put, I put my, my arm around Show you how bad I, I am. am I'm I'm unstoppable I'm a Porsche with no brakes I'm invincible I win every single game I'm so powerful I don't, I don't need batteries to play. play. I'm, I'm so confident. confident. I'm unstoppable today. All right, that's it. I'm going to play the song after the service. Everybody can hear it fully. Thank you, guys. I know it wasn't planned. Was that a pass? All right, we can try that again the next time. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. And I'll leave you all with just, you know, be unstoppable. Namaste.